Blink with the sword, something. I don't know. Last time something happened, I think there was a bird and we flew on it. And this time there was a thing that we just followed outside. And that we're still following. And Skyloft, night time. Don't worry, the game didn't... The game designers didn't waste so much time designing how this whole night sky stuff and how awesome Skyloft looks at night and all these torches being lit and stuff just for this one section of the game. Later times when we return to Skyloft, spoiler alert, we're actually going to not be in Skyloft the whole game, as if you couldn't tell based on the fact that we've pretty much explored the entire place in three whole videos, but we will have the ability to go around the place at night and do stuff, and there's actually things that you can do at night that are different than things you can do in the day, so that's cool, but we're not going to do that now. And, if you remember from the previous episode, we did get our sailcloth, which lets us not get hurt by falling from big distances. So anytime you fall off of a large enough height, eventually, your sailcloth icon will pop up and you use the sailcloth and you don't fall. I don't think I missed anything up there. There are two treasure chests containing rupees in this small segment somewhere. I found them in both failed recordings, so I really don't want to miss them now. And if you come over here, you will notice it's the thing that we picked up in the first episode that was giving us so much trouble. Yep, these little animal things are actually evil at night only. They're like were, cat, tanuki, cat, bear, rabbit thingies. I don't even, I have no idea what these things are supposed to be, but I believe if I put my sword away, I can pick it up and throw it off the ledge. But if you do, it's just a really Ooh, does that trick only work at the day, or is it actually gone? Oh, no. Nope. They can actually fly using their ears. If it wasn't for, like, the demon face, that would probably be adorable. I have to do that at during the day at some point. Is, is that a real... Oh, I never knew there were actually real constellations in the sky. Because there, there's... Oh, whoa, whoa. It becomes evil again. I mean... I would probably become evil, too, if someone threw me off a cliff. But still, I never knew there were, like, real stars and stuff. There's the Big Dipper. There's the North Star. That's... That's weird. This Skyloft is definitely not winter, but that was winter sky... I, I know too much about astronomy to start talking about it in the middle of a Zelda video. But, bigger choo-choos. You have to hit them vertically or they will reform and then kill the smaller blobs. They're not that big of a threat. There is the first of those treasure chests that I was talking about. It contains a red rupee. So now we've been given at least five red rupees for little to no effort. Gee, I wonder if they're highly suggesting we buy something the next time we get a chance to. That was sarcasm. You should be able to tell that they want you to buy something soon. Since rupees have no use but currency... Alright, just a little... No, no, no enemies that we haven't encountered yet. Just a little test to see if you can, like, I guess, figure out... Oh, look, a steep slope. We had to use the run button to climb up that last time. It's even easier than the waterfall. This section is, I guess, a little more parkour heavy, if you could call it that. I don't know. I'm con considering that I'm playing so badly that I'm hitting the nunchuck with the Wii Remote every time I swing the sword. I should probably not be talking and focusing on, like, not falling off in a second. A either way. As you saw before, we could not get cutscene interrupted. Well, actually, we can always get cutscene interrupted. But that's not... I was not trying to show that we can get cutscene interrupted. I am sort of trying to show that... Flying Ghost Lady makes Magical Door appear, and I think I'm going to be required to go in it now. Am I? Am, am I? That's an interesting shot, and yes, I am trying... I, I'm going to be forced... Okay. No, never mind. So... 
I kind of completely skipped over it by immediately following the thing. But, as you can see, there are bars here, so we would not have been able to get into the statue easily, so I had to go the little roundabout way. Wow. These bars aren't even made of anything. They're just visual things. They don't, they don't have any substance to them. I'm swinging the sword through. It's only hitting on the walls. Look. Spin attack didn't even hit anything. That's lazy programming, to say the least. Uh, I'm going to roll into these trees and get some free money. Or not. There's still a case here that I can kill. That's also not going to give me any free money. I have not checked. I've been... I actually wanted to check in one of the failed recordings. I just passed it by. During the day, at any point where you are free to roam Skyloft, as in before you meet Groose and the five minutes you get to go through the waterfall, you can come back and you can get to the statue from this area. I've never checked if the treasure chests are there and you can actually collect the rupees early. I know as a fact that you can collect them late, but I don't know if you can collect them early. So that's would be interesting to know if I ever bothered to make another file. But this is one of those treasure things that I've been alluding to for two episodes and kind of didn't talk about at all in the third one because there was no combat. This is a jelly blob. This is a treasure most commonly dropped by Choo Choo's and another enemy that we have yet to see. That is the first of 20 treasures we have encountered. And it is one of the most useful as it is one of the most common. And since I have wasted a full five minutes talking about that, we should probably go into the door that is now there. Or through the stone panel that no longer exists. I'm not sure which would make more sense. It's not really a door, more of a doorway. There's no physical door that we had to open to get through. I mean, the shining ghost lady opened the door for us, so I guess it could be a door. But oh, look, it's a sword in the sky. Gee, they, that doesn't remind me of anything about the game's title at all. And... Thing for my dreams. The one chosen by my creator. I have been waiting for you. You will play a role in your great destiny. According to your social customs, I should provide you with my personal designation. Phi, Fi, Di, for both pronunciations. I'm going to go with Phi because that's the way I pronunciated it every other time, like before I heard it being pronounced the other way, is the name I was given. I was created for a single purpose, long before the recorded memory of your people. I must aid you in fulfilling the great destiny that is your burden to carry. Come, Link, you must take up the sword, as the one chosen by my creator it is your destiny. The strange dreams troubling your sleep, my sudden appearance, uncertainty surrounding the fate of the one you hold dear. Under the circumstances, it is only logical that you would exhibit some apprehension. To minimize your uncertainty, allow me to share some information. My projections indicate this information has a high probability of altering your current emotional state. The one you seek, Honorable Zelda, is still alive. And the Spirit Maiden, the one you call Zelda is another chosen one fated to be part of the same great mission. Therefore, should you wish to meet with your friend, I highly recommend you take up the sword before you set out to search for her. Yeah, I mean, getting another sword would help. I mean, the flavor text for picking up the practice sword only said that it was fairly sharp. What if this sword is very sharp? That would be better automatically. Does that information invigorate you? Are you ready to accept this sword? I think you are required to say yes. Yep. It seems that further persuasive measures will not be required. In the name of my creator, draw the sword and raise it skyward. Hey, the, you see, the title does make sense. It's not just that we're in a sky and we get a sword, but there's a sword, and then we get to do this small, sort of unnecessary motion controlled section to pull the sword out, and then it's a sword. We're holding it skyward. I, I never thought that video games would actually have titles that made sense. This is the scene from the intro video, and this isn't even the right song. I think this one's even from Mario, the one that I'm seeing. You got the goddess sword. This mysterious sword is bathed in divine light. Well, not all the time. The, the text is a little misleading. Recognition complete, Master. Think. 
my master. Link. Suddenly old guy. I've had my suspicions, but until now I wasn't sure. Yet here we are in the Chamber of the Sword, the very place where it was foretold the youth of legend would one day appear. I completely skipped that line, um, according to the capture software, which is like five seconds behind, the place was created by the goddess herself, something else, other sentence that I missed. The very knowledge of this room's existence is a secret passed down to a select few each generation, along with a handful of words. When the light of the goddess assured signs... <laughs> It's a good thing I made this a separate episode from the previous one. Given every time that I've screwed up in any of this dialogue, it would have been like an hour-long video, also taking into account the pieces of that weird 11-minute intro that I'm going to keep. When the light of the goddess's sword shines bright, the great apocalypse will wake from its long slumber. Do not fear, for it is then that a youth, guided by my hand, shall reveal himself in a place most sacred. This is definitely not the tone of voice that I should be using. It started days ago. A sword that I've kept secret all these years. Beginning to give off a faint, otherworldly light. At first, I was sure I was seeing things, here alone with the sword. There was simply no other explanation. Old people and hallucinations! This game makes more sense every day! I never dreamed the prophecy of legend would come to pass in my lifetime. words I've sworn to keep secret are coming true before my very eyes. The youth will be guided by one born of the blade, one who is also youthful in likeness, yet wise with knowledge immeasurable. That line is about another misleading thing. You'll see. You'll see. Ah uh, yes, the oral tradition, one of the least reliable methods of information retention and transmission. Says the thing that only has a message from the goddess in its memory, not written down or anything, as would be, like, supporting that st Never mind. Robots don't follow our logic. Robots don't even follow Nintendo logic. It appears that critical sections of the passage have been lost over the generations. Oh, Gapura, you're, you're gonna get schooled, get it? Because you're the headmaster of the school, it's funny! The youth who draws forth the guiding sword shall be known as the goddess's chosen hero, and it is he who possesses an unbreakable spirit. He shall be burdened with the task of abolishing the shadow of apocalypse from the land. Such is his destiny. With the spirit of the blade at his side, he shall soar over the clouds and plant below, and united with the spirit maiden, shall bring forth the piercing light that resurrects the land. Some of Father's old texts talk about a place called the Surface. The old tales describe a whole world below, far more vast than Skyloft. Master, you must embark on a great journey beneath the clouds to the vast realm of the Surface. It is only through this journey that you can fulfill the mission set before you by my creator, the Goddess. It is also the only method available for you to reunite the Spirit Maiden, Honorable Zelda. This is no easy task, Link. The world below is a forsaken place, and to reach it, you must pierce the cloud barrier below. In living memory, no one has ever done this. This isn't creepy looking at all. And it's also kind of hurting my eyes, even though I'm playing this in a fairly well lit room. This tablet will illuminate a path through the clouds to the land below. Take it and place it within the altar behind me. You got the Emerald Tablet. The weathered surface of this heavy stone tablet feels very old. Anything that sort of could be almost interpreted as a reference to Pokemon Emerald is good in my book. Master, the first thing you must do is hit the crest sitting in this room with the Skyward Strike. See, so yeah, I could cover up my mistakes in reading the dialogue since I had to make it sound robotical and stuff. These blasts are formed of pure energy that charges within your blade when you lift it skyward. Wouldn't pure energy destroy matter that would be making the blade, or is this just more no non-physics? Or am I just wrong? I don't know. Once you've charged the blade, face the crest and swing your sword to set out a powerful skyward strike act that was supposed to say, sent out. So basically, skyward strike is very simple. 
You hold the sword up to the sky like you did before, and then swing it in any direction. You can do, like, a sword beam thing. Every sword slash has its own slightly different version of the Skyward Strike. Even the jump attack has one. Even better is that both your horizontal and vertical spin attacks have versions that serve to greatly increase the spin attack's radius. Very similar to the great spin of Twilight Prin Okay, that's just pathetic. Of Twilight Princess, except you don't need to be at full health to use it. So, any Skyward Strike while targeted onto it will do, and that'll happen. That was also probably the quickest version of that explanation of Skyward Strikes that I've done before. That I've done so far, not even before. And the little puzzle solve jingle for solving a puzzle that they flat out told you how to solve so it doesn't really count as a puzzle. They give you the puzzle solve jingle for solving a tutorial. I think that's what I was trying to say. I don't know. I don't listen to myself when I talk. That's weird. I could have sworn the light hitting the clouds made like a farty sound as the light went through the clouds. Oh well. I don't want it to be a fart sound. Master Link, it is done. Until now, a cloud barrier created by the goddess has separated the world you know from the one below. The tablet you placed in the altar has opened a small rift in the barrier. You can use it to travel through the clouds to the realm below. I've recognized you as my master, and so it is my duty to follow you wherever you may go. I reside within your sword and will accompany you in your travels. Press down to summon you whenever you require my assistance. You see, how come Fi doesn't realize that if we're going to be carrying the sword that she lives in then she would kind of have to go with me whether she chose to do so or not. Given the fact that the furthest she was able to travel from the sword was Link's bedroom in the academy, which is not that far in a linear distance from where we are currently. Whatever. Link, listen a moment. The nature of the great apocalypse mentioned in the old text is a complete mystery to me. But whatever it turns out to be, it seems that both you and Zelda have big roles to play in the destiny of this land. Just think. If what this spy says is true, Zelda is alive. Alive and no doubt coming to terms with whatever it is the goddess has in store for her. Should you heed the call of destiny, I don't know what dangers you may have to face, Link, especially down there. But if you've decided to brave the unknown, please find my daughter and bring her back to me. What we've seen here today defies explanation, but it is only the start of your journey. Please, see it through and prove the legend's true. It's always an epic scene. I have never said anything other than okay to this. You do your people proud, Link. Dawn is drawing near. It's been a long night for both of us, hasn't it? You have a great journey before you, Link. Those clothes, they don't look up to the task. The uniform you were to receive for winning the race should be ready by now. A sturdy uniform like that will prove much more suitable for a long journey. You better change before you go. And Link changing within the first three or four hours of gameplay could only mean in field save in the middle of an episode I can't really Green Green More green A lot of green Alright, so now I at least look like a proper Link That green uniform is what our knight should be, will be wearing this year to be honest, I've had my doubts about the color. Oddly enough, seeing you wear this uniform, I can't imagine a more fitting color for you. It's as though you were born to wear it. Sadly, although Link is clearly wearing a shirt of mail underneath the green thing of his uniform and on top of the white thing of his uniform, it will not make you take less damage than you were when you were wearing just a regular shirt for some reason. But, whatever. At least you look cool. Link looks like Link now. That's probably a good thing. Take care on your journey and be sure to stop by some of the shops at the bazaar here in town to equip yourself properly for the travels ahead. I will return to my quarters and see if I can glean any more useful information from the ancient texts. You're always welcome to stop by if you have questions. You and Zelda shall be in my prayers. Careers. I think I said, did I even, I like said careers instead of prayers. May the goddess watch over and guide you both.
Okay, so... Now, for real, for real, we have the whole run of Skyloft. Meaning we can go anywhere and we can actually talk to the majority of the people in town. But, Fledge again. Blink! That green uniform looks so adventurous. You sure look like a knight now. Headmaster said you're heading out to look for Zelda. You're really something else. I can never imagine myself doing what you're about to do. Put a lot of work into making this. You should get your view. You got the adventure pouch. You can store all kinds of useful items in this handy piece of gear. It's an adventure pouch. It's for adventures. Yay! It's neat because you can fit four things in it that you'll need on your big journey. You can buy all kinds of stuff at the bazaar that you can put in this pouch. You should go look. You can buy some potions and a shield that you put in the pouch and they might come in handy on an adventure. I really can't do this voice this late in the night. Link, I just know you'll find Zelda for us. Okay, I'm going to run in the opposite direction as fastly as I possibly can. Also, as you notice on the Wii Remote icon there, there's a little Phi icon. And we'll go over what Phi does a bit later. Like, once we actually get to the surface, because that makes the most sense. But, now that you do have your goddess sword, and speaking of Phi, Master, I have an update regarding the stone tablet and the resulting column of light it created. The column of light has appeared to the south of our location, and signs indicated that it is created an opening in the cloud barrier to the land below. I'm speaking really fast to get out this cutscene over with so I can actually get to the surface by the end of this episode. I must also caution that you descending to the surface armed with only a sword will result in a decreased probability of survival. If you have not already done so, I advise you to purchase this shield and potion at the bazaar and preparation for your journey. Another subject to discuss, Master. Once you are accustomed to the controls, you are free to modify the on-screen interface. On the gear screen, select interface to select the on-screen display to suit your preferences. Now, as you can see, this HUD is really crowded. It has the A button to teach you to dash. It has the open your adventure pouch with minus thing. Your gear screen with the one button. Your on-screen controls. It shows everything you can do with nunchuck. However, there are, wrong button, if you press the gear button and switch to the gear screen, you'll actually be able to change the interface. Don't worry, I guess clicking the Wii Remote lets you calibrate the Wii Motion Plus. That's not what I was trying to do. If you click the interface button, you can switch to light interface, which removes the nunchuck and the outline of the Wii Remote, or the, my Wrong button again. My personal preference, and the one that we're going to be using throughout the LP, the Pro interface, which removes everything besides that which is in the upper left-hand corner. And one other thing that we haven't had added to the interface yet, so it doesn't really matter. Now, you can finally enter the Skyloft Bazaar, and that was weird. As you saw, the sailcloth icon does appear, temporarily. And it does look like we're going to have to wait for the next episode to head off to the surface. But anyway, this is the Skyloft Bazaar. This is the most lively the town has seen so far. I didn't mean to talk to you. You are really creepy. He's a fortune teller. He basically tells you where you can find various secrets. Trust my piercing eyes. Listen to my pure and innocent voice. I will do you no harm. Gaze deeply into my eyes and come closer. Um, no, he's important for a side quest, but other than that, I'm never talking to him. This guy, he can use treasures to upgrade stuff. We don't have anything that can be upgraded yet. This person, while also being important for her own side quest and looking really bored and ugly, she will store items for you if you don't have room in your adventure pouch for them, since ours can only hold four. This guy, he sells you items. You can buy... Bombs, arrows, and seeds, but you will be told that you don't have a place to put them and not be able to buy them. The one thing you can buy, however, is a wooden shield. So, finally, you get a shield. You can buy it for 50 rupees, which, since they give you flat out over 100, that should not be any problem. And he's going to tell you how to use it, but I'm going to... Oh, also, somehow you can fit an entire shield in the adventure pouch. So, yeah, there's that. Open your pouch. You can put the wooden shield out. Notice that another health-like bar was added to the interface in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. 
little bit of a different thing about shields in Skyward Sword is that they have a durability meter that goes down when you use the shield to block attacks unsuccessfully. By unsuccessfully, I mean you block the attack and don't take damage, but you don't successfully repel it by performing a shield maneuver that we're going to get in depth with in the next episode when we get into combat on the surface. If you don't perform the blocking maneuver properly, the shield will take damage, it'll break when it runs out. Each type of shield has its own special properties that I'll go over when we first obtain that kind of shield. The That of the wooden shield is that it is flammable, so if you're hit with a fire attack and block it with a wooden shield, it will burn up immediately, leaving you defenseless. Luckily, we should not have to use the wooden shield to guard against any fire attacks, as by the time we get into fighting enemies that use those, we will have the opportunity to buy other and better shields. So, with that explanation out of the way, it's time to explain another big important thing that no one really cares about in Skyward Sword. Hey, you there! Yes, you, the adorable boy with the golden hair! Welcome to the potion shop! You can drink our potions when you enter to fill up your hearts! Hey, you're one of those knights, aren't you? Or one in training, at least. Huh? Let me tell you, one look at you and I can tell you need my potions by the cauldron full, so don't try to sink away without stocking up. Oh dear, I forgot to ask if you have an empty bottle on you. Just so you know, I can't sell you a potion if you don't have an empty bottle to pour it into. For some reason, I like you though, so I'll give you a spare empty bottle. I can keep it in your install. Oh, it's nothing, it's my little gift. You only hear me say this often, but you don't have things beside potions in an empty bottle, so it's a useful thing to carry around. You got an empty bottle, you can fill it with all sorts of useful things. Empty bottles fit in your adventure path. Press minus to take a look. You ever get the point where you can't fit any more stuff in your pouch because it's full, you can always drop items off the item check, which is that store with the ugly person that I was talking about. So, basically, the only potion you can actually buy is this one. It will restore eight hearts. The other ones I will go over when they become available. Personally, I do not use potions in Skyward Sword. They can be used... There are several other, a lot more useful things that you can put in your adventure pouch. And lastly, this guy, the husband of the potion lady... Her name is Love, spelled L-U-V. His is Birdie. They are some of the few generic citizens of Skyloft without bird names. And he will let you, with bugs and rupees, similar to how treasures and rupees let you upgrade your gear, shields can be upgraded, but I'm not going to try because I know I don't have the treasures required to upgrade this one. He will upgrade your potions to have more potency. Currently, the red potion can be upgraded twice. One upgrade, I'm not going to spoil what you need to upgrade it, since it will include bugs that we haven't found yet, will turn it from restoring eight of your hearts, which is already more than we need, to restoring all of your hearts. And it will be red potion, called heart potion, and not simply red potion, Skyward Sword. That will make, that will make it heart potion plus. Upgrading it again, which costs more money and more bugs, will give you heart potion plus plus, which is the same, but it includes two servings instead of just one. Other than that, there is nothing really important when the other potions are available. I will go over them in their upgrades, as well as what it takes to upgrade them, but we're keeping this bottle empty unless she does actually make you buy something, which I thought she wouldn't, so we're going to leave. And now, this was not really that interesting or fulfilling of an episode. Well, no, wait. Never mind, the whole nighttime sequence was part of this episode. Right. So we learned a lot more about the lore of the land. We did learn that Zelda is indeed alive. We got a new sword. Got new clothes. We got a shield. And we're gonna head through a magical green hole in the sky to go to the ground next time. So, until then, I'm the leader of Luxonape, signing off. Was a diddly doo dum dido. Uh, that... If I say so myself, breaking pots. <laughs>